This week, we're going to start off the week with having family photos. We have not had family photos taken in about two years. Uh, my best friend growing up in Oregon... There's Kurt in his room getting ready. <laughs> my best friend in Oregon has always taken our pictures, but she's pregnant right now, so she's not flying down to see us. So we found another amazing photographer. Her name's Melissa. I will introduce her. I'll send a link. She's in the Miami area. She traveled down to the Keys for us. Um, she, I cannot wait to show you these photos. So we are a little hot and sweaty today um, because it's finally getting warm in springtime. So unfortunately, it's trying to get ready in the heat. We're all sweaty. Come on, that was a good line. Say I'm it again. Hot. I'm very sunburned. He's always hot. And Carter got so sunburned. I'm always hot. I worked for it. Yeah, what'd you do yesterday, Carter? I was chasing pelicans off a dock. And you had your first day at work. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. It is hot. You want to turn on some of those fans? Yes. What kind of clothes are we picking out, too? Uh, whatever Jolene tells me to put on. <laughs> Everyone's wearing, like, blacks and blues and... I don't know why there's, shirt or not shirt? there's an orange there. Uh, show me your collared shirt. I've got a blue, I've got a gray, I've got a red. Um, Pull that blue one out. Um, Is that what you wore last? No, last time you wore, wore orange. orange. What do you think? Take the blue and let's take the gray the extra. Blue. You look nice. Just chilling in Ron John. Black shorts. Love you. Mm -hmm. You ready? Mm -hmm. She loves you. Gotta groom my Chewbacca. Huh? Chewbacca. The Wookiee? Oh! Uh -huh. no, 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 no. I can't do a Chewbacca. <laughs> You look handsome. You look handsome. So all I gotta do is rush my hair to look handsome. You look handsome. Less bear like. <laughs> you look like a woolly mammoth no matter what though. Who threw lettuce from their sandwich out the back? Me. Oh, I didn't know if I wanted to trash that. I'm tossing it. The comforter? All right. Coming in. Yep, coming in. Drop it. Did I crush something? Yep. <laughs> W40, real good stuff. Uh -huh. Smear it all over, brush it down. What's 15W40? The oil I put in the engine. <laughs> but before we take our family photos, we have to go say goodbye to our buddy boat. On the count of three, goodbye. One, two, three. Goodbye! goodbye. You on the other side? from Texas who sold everything to live full-time on our 1987 Marine Trader Tradewinds 47. We have three boys, Carter, Chase, and Caleb. We also have two cats aboard, Cheddar and Tiger. For two years we have enjoyed cruising, exploring, beautiful sunsets, loads of family fun, and brotherly bonding. We also enjoy exploring the water, snorkeling, and diving. In the Florida Keys, the Bahamas, and who knows where to next. We want to say a special thank you to all of our patrons.
Carter. <laughs> you must have taken one with me in there yeah. at least. Just, no, don't worry. Just stand here. Here we are. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Good job, guys. Good job. Add mom and dad in there. You guys stay wherever you are. Mom and dad are going to be on the side. Yeah. So I have a confession to make. I have a problem. I am always on Facebook Marketplace shopping for boats. I own two boats, and apparently two boats is not enough. So I found this sailboat for free for Chase, because he always wanted to have a sailboat, and you don't get much better than free. What are you guys doing? Scraping the barnacles off with rocks. Oh, do they have some growth on it? Uh -huh. I have a wedge. And why, how come you're doing it now and not in the water? Because we don't have to constantly go, <gasps> Water. Whose boat is this? Mine. Uh, the Nat family. Tell me about it, Chase. Stop doing that so I can get the stuff eyes? out of my eyes. Oh, Tell me about it, Chase. So it's called a JY15. Uh, I am pretty sure 15 stands for the length, but I don't know for sure. And How much did it cost you? Oh, it was free. Uh -huh. Why was it free? Uh, someone bought it from the Key West Sailing Club and they only used it like 10 times over a course of one and a half years and they just wanted to give it to someone who wanted to use it and that was me. Yep. Nice guy, wasn't he? Uh-huh. And if you wanted to go left in my area, that's because I hope it floats! We can get it from here. It's secure. Hold on to it just in case. I'm going to start going. Up now? You can't get it up? Get it up, work together please. It's just going like crazy. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but it's the JY15. So what do you plan to do with this sailboat? Uh, sail around, maybe make my friends jealous a little. That's um, our kids have wonderful motives. <laughs> you don't want to play in it and have fun in the water? Yeah, it would actually be fun to like, sunglasses. on a nice day uh, in the summer when the water's warm, we just like let it hang off the back of the boat like 50 feet. And then we just like play around it and like use it as a little floaty if we ever need to catch our breath. That would be fun. Yeah, I think that's a sail bag. Uh -huh. You're gonna need to put your logo on that. Yeah. Also, on the side, it will say wave clear and then have a small. Okay, hey, is that anything else? It's Yep, let me that. Toss it here. Uh, nope, don't set it there, it'll fall off. Mm -hmm. it's not a wise option, Dad. There's the boom, but it should be fine. I think the boom is attached. Yeah, it's tied on. Okay, I'm good with all that stuff. May I just see the boat finally? Yeah. I haven't ever seen it yet. It makes our dinghy look even Maybe smaller. Poor little salty. Good morning and welcome to Talking From Our Aft. Um, before we get into this week's question, come back next week because we are going to go through our exact costs of living on a boat that we 
calculated and tallied for the month of February, some of our projects that we had to do, and we'll talk about our future plans because we're not going to stay here. We stayed here for the winter and then we're heading out. That's right. This week we had a question come to us through some form of our social media. I don't know what. Jolene does all that. <clears throat> Someone was asking about kind of our power and they're thinking through the process of, of getting into a boat and trying to understand the electrical and the systems and how they work as far as um, when you're on shore power, you know, we've got solar, you've got generator, what, what, what's on, what's off, all that kind of stuff. So you got to think of your boat as um, two, two sides, right? Two systems. Mm -hmm. One is your 12 volt or your battery powered system. The other is your 110 or your shore power slash generator system. And the biggest thing to remember off the t right up front is usually generator and shore power are the same. One is just when you're plugged into the dock and you're getting power from the grid. The other one, you're running your own generator, so it's like you're creating your own grid, yeah. right? Um, I'm learning too. <laughs> and then when you're out on anchor, if your battery or if your generator is off, at that point you're running on batteries. And there are certain parts of your boat that are always on, or most likely always on. Um, for example, refrigeration, so freezer, refrigerator. Um, you've got lights that you may be using or not using. Um, in the evening, you've always got an anchor light on if you're at anchor. Um, and then if you've got kids, you've got all the other things that they just leave on and then walk out of the room and forget lights. about. Everything. Radios, fans, all kinds of stuff. It doesn't stop with boat life. They still do it. So it is very different when you're on a boat with a family. You have to size your power system for those things too. Yeah. The kid that leaves the... So like the first thing I did was change every light bulb in the boat to LED. Mm -hmm. So our lights, we could leave them on for days and it'd probably be okay. Mm -hmm. um, so as far as the, the, the battery system and stuff, you got to size it. You got to try and figure out how, how do I live my life. And that's tough until you've actually done it, I think, right? Mm -hmm. I would say we just kind of went with it and then we're like, ooh, we don't yeah. have enough battery. And we added another battery. And we're like, okay, this yeah. is working. So we have how many now? We have three uh, 8D batteries. And they're each 235 amp hours. I think we've got like 700. I thought you were going to say how much they weighed. Like, oh. Yeah, they're about 235. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're definitely heavy. They're, yeah, not they're that really heavy. heavy. But um, so 700 amp hours. And then the next thing I would do if I was trying to figure out my electrical is, and I didn't do it till like just now, and I, I just now realized how stinking helpful it is. <laughs> Get that battery monitoring system. Because no, you knew how. No, you knew you I wanted had a, it. Yeah, I know I wanted it. We just didn't. I didn't realize just exactly how helpful it is. Not only just in understanding how much power you use, but in um, how you're taking care of your batteries and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. And it's a two hundred dollar investment, mm -hmm. and I've got fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars worth of batteries. Let alone just taking care of those makes it worth it. But. Um, there's a lot of boats running around. Yeah, there's a beautiful day today. We're about to get. Weather in the next three or four days, it's going to be blowing 30 miles an hour. Every weekend it, it blows. It, it just seems like every weekend. Um, and the other thing, so you've got um, certain things that run off batteries, and then you've got certain things that only run, I say only, normally they only run off of uh, either the generator or the shore power. And those would be like your water heater, and the big one for everyone is always an air conditioner. Mm -hmm. You can get... Um, with the advent of um, lithium batteries, you can get big enough battery banks and you can get big enough inverters to where you can run that mm -hmm. stuff off a of battery. But then it comes down to the point you're going to have to eventually charge those batteries. You only run them for so long. Um, and that's where solar and a generator or shore power that are recharging those batteries comes into play. Um, it's really bright today. Yeah, that's why I'm wearing my sunglasses. I know. I didn't grab but that's the other thing you realize when you live on a boat. And again, it's tough until you actually do it. People always ask us about air conditioning. We haven't used air conditioner in six months. Yeah. No. There are months in the in the summer where I'm sure we will run it quite a bit. But we have found for us it's just to sleep. So we'll fire up the generator when we're on anchor, run the ACs for three, four hours, get the bedrooms cooled down. Mm -hmm. And then when the sun goes down and they're cool, we can normally shut those off and just sleep with fans on and it works fine. Well, 
the reason we don't run ACs during the day in the summer is because the doors are always open. Yeah. So then the ACs are inefficient it's, anyway. It's, it's a waste. They end up getting we're they, running in and out. And they get frozen over if you yeah. don't, you know, close it up and make it in there. Yeah. Um, it's a waste of diesel, diesel fuel to run the generator when the, it's not working. So when our generator stops working, we have no AC. But AC on, I think AC. I'm sorry, let me back up. I think in the winter, it's easier to not run an AC on Anchor. Yes, so when you're on Anchor, and that's one of the reasons we love being on Anchor, you're always turning into the wind. So the wind is always coming at the front of our boat. The front of our boat opens up with hatches, so we get flow from the front to the back. Mm -hmm. And it's usually windy season down here for in the Bahamas and a lot of places mm -hmm. in the winter. And you're at a dock, especially if you're in a marina where there's stuff blocking the wind, other mm -hmm. boats, buildings you don't always get the wind in the right direction. And so it's usually if you're tied to a dock, yeah, you're gonna run more AC. Now with that being said, there's benefits of a dock too, but turning into the wind is not one of them. Yeah, exactly. Uh, all things to think about yeah. when you're trying to process, oh, I wanna live on a boat and how's this gonna work? What's my cost? We're gonna talk about cost next month. Next if you're li week. Yeah, that's what I said, next week. Uh -huh. And uh, if you if you're thinking about a dock versus on anchor, you know stuff like that. It's comfort of life. What's what's comfortable for me? Um, for Joy and I, it's comfortable not with spending the money and listening to the generator, listening to the ACs all night. We're okay dinging in, mm -hmm. and um, not spending the money on a dock. It's it's just where we would prefer to be. Mm -hmm. um, there are certain boats. If you go buy a boat, it's set up to be a dock queen. It has no solar. It has no generator. It's like you plug it in and, and you drive it. And when you drive it, you unplug from the dock, drive it to another dock and plug it back in. Yeah. And that's okay if that's what you want. Uh, it's just a different way of using and living the boat. Yeah. Every boat's got to be set up for the way you want to use it. Yeah. Um, what are the questions? Think that? Yeah, I think that answers. If you have any more questions, of course, let us know about power, batteries, all that. So there's a guy on YouTube that's been very helpful for me for... Um, electrical stuff mm -hmm. and it's um i believe his name is jeff coates if i'm saying that right and um he's got his youtube channel is pacific yacht systems and this is a gentleman that does nothing but marine electrical and he's out of the northwest so it's called pacific yacht systems but if you look him up he has a lot of great topics um tutorials he speaks at a lot of boat shows and he'll explain how to wire how the wiring works on a boat how to look it up uh, or how to uh, hook it up um the different new technologies that are coming out with alternators, with generators, with solar, with lithium, uh, inverters. He goes through a lot of that stuff. So if you really need to dig into it and figure out how to size your battery bank and how to do all that kind of stuff, it pretty much it covers everything. So it's a great source. It can be dry, but it's important stuff. Um, did you post pictures of the boat fire the other day? Of which boat? The boat fire? No, I didn't say anything. So we had a boat. Or is it? Uh, it's like 300. I think they removed it. Did they move it? Or is it that up there? I'm not sure. Because we were swung. It's one of these. Anyway, we had a boat over here on the side of our, in our anchorage that caught fire the other day. And um, I'll put a picture. Yeah, a picture. Here. Maybe we got a little video clip. You can put that in there. Right? In the text. Maybe. You'd be surprised how many boat fires are started by electrical. Mm -hmm. um, something corrodes and gets hot. Yep. Something is miswired backwards. Um, I think that's probably one of our most common causes of boat fires is electrical. So it's super, super important that you get your wiring properly secured, that it's connected in the right way, and then it's got the, especially with these lithium batteries, people that do lithium, they do have a risk of overheating and running away and, and melting down and catching fire. Um, the technology is getting better and better and better so that it doesn't do that. But you got to hook it up right. You got to set it right. All that kind of stuff. Um, so just something to think about. If you're, I would say it's probably one of the. We've had more issues with our electrical system that causes problems too, right? Like being stuck in the Bahamas with dead batteries and generator going down. So it's it's a major, major, major part of your boat. Besides your main engines moving the boat and your navigation, your electrical system is probably your next. Mm -hmm. So definitely good question. Stuff to be stuff been thinking about as you're uh, looking into possibly living aboard mm -hmm. so thank you for the question and uh, we appreciate it keep those questions coming if you got other stuff we'd, we'd like to talk about like i say the more interesting to me the more likely they're likely to get talked about so, <laughs> thanks for watching hope you guys have a great week well uh, we'll see you next week like join said when it comes to uh talking about finances right yeah
And uh, please, always enjoy the journey.